Welcome back to a very special episode of The Gentleman Show. We are the gentlemen, as always. Curtis Nash. Josh Graber. And I am Darren Wartz. And as you can see from the picture behind us, we have a little special kind of spotlight we're going to be doing today. Yeah, we're all, I think we're all pretty much Tim Burton fans here. Yeah, yeah if you're so. not, that's crazy yeah, talk. out of here. We grew up on, he's our, like, that's our age group, you know? He he's started been out around younger. for... Ever, so, like yeah, it seems, you know, like you said. He's yeah, he has been around. Mm-hmm. And uh, his new movie, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, comes out this Saturday. So we thought, why not you know? mention what we like about Tim Burton, some of our favorite Top flicks. three. Top because three. It doesn't need to Tim. all be geek news. It can no. be <laughs> geeky things. But <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we can also do spotlights. But before we get into the Tim Burton kind of love, uh, we're going to kind of go through what we love that was on TV this week because a yeah. lot of, we did our fall movie preview last week. We did the fall TV preview the week before. And this past week, all of those shows have been premiering. Well, a majority of yeah. them anyway. Yeah. And it's been one of my favorite weeks to sit on my ass and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with you, Kurt. What were you uh, loving? One of the, I love the return of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, one of my favorite shows. Oh, but one of the too. new shows that have stuck out to me, actually, that I quite like a lot. I like the genre, though. Is uh, the Exorcist? Ah, you mm. took one of mine. All right? I yeah, thought, yeah. I thought they did a really good job with the first episode, like for being on Fox, like not like a AMC or an HBO or right. or Cinemax or anything like that. I thought, you know what? I think it's gonna go places as long as they stick to like a really good storyline, obviously. Mm-hmm. But the acting's good in it, and I can see where they're going. And I'm like, okay, if you can stick the actual ex- exorcism part, where like a demonic possession part, where they can keep it scary and maybe push the line a little bit for uh, cable television, then I think they'll get it. Here we go, yeah. Because it's still sit- that's sitting on my, uh, my PVR box at home. I'm still waiting to watch that. But is it like, as for cable TV network, is it an exorcism kind of like the exorcist of the week kind of thing that they're doing it? Or how are they laying I the think- show out? Well, how it's laid it now is looks like it's going to be one story, one story arc for ten episodes or thirteen episodes. Okay, good. So it's not like Ghost of the Week. No, no like a, and I think that would be no, a bad no idea, right? Order, yeah. Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> spooky. Darren would be all over that. <laughs> all <laughs> Olivia Bunsen here. Get to, get Marish Kahar to ice tea and ice tea on the case. I don't believe no ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Liv, I just got a call. We got a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh, what about you? What are you enjoying? This uh, week? I'm gonna go just to not. Not something new, but something I uh, we all love, and that's R- Rebels, Star mm. Wars. That was oh, that, that would have so been good. mine. Holy that moly! So oh, I, I just first of all, I just want to personally thank both of you for making me watch this. Yeah, <laughs> like, like you just caught up. Oh, I literally I caught up by like three weeks before the premiere of this, and yeah. I, I, those three weeks were the shittiest three weeks of my entire just waiting, life. Yeah. Just waiting. Oh no, it's uh, obviously the way that season two ends off. Uh, with like one of the greatest, the greatest finales, <laughs> and like people are like, oh, it's a, it's an animated, it's a cartoon. No, like it's just, it's like everything that Star Wars that Disney's doing, it's all canon, so it's all relevant in the Star Wars universe. So even though this takes place um, before Episode Four. Mm-hmm. Um, Will we see it tie into perhaps Rogue One? We don't or we don't know. Um, Maybe some names or things here yeah. and there. But you know, over. like with the introduction of Thrawn again, like Thrawn was <laughs> Thrawn was essentially like an extended uh, universe character where he wasn't a part of it. Like he was, he was in the books. They weren't too sure. Disney brings him into this into this show, so it's his first appearance, and now he's a part of the Star Wars universe. Like, I don't think people really understand, That's you know, how deal. it works. Yeah, and like it, <laughs> it is a huge deal. So to see, you know, the return of of something I love, you know, back to some lightsabers yeah. and kicking butt every and weekend. That first time oh, Ezra yeah. draws his lightsaber, and you get to see where his powers are oh, for this yeah. season. <laughs> I must say, it is interesting though. You said with the, the crossing over into the other movies, it's kind of neat to watch how they're building the rebellion, like how they yeah. got the bombers in yeah. this episode, and how that kind of ties into the rebellion, and they're building the fleet in right. these shows. I think that's really cool. Yeah. If you're a Star Wars fan you're not watching Rebels, you're not a Star Wars fan. Yeah, you're just a fan. <laughs> Get on it. And everybody hates you. <laughs> you may like the movies, but if you're a true Star Wars fan, like Street Books, you need to be watching Rebels. It's something you need to see. Yeah. It is that good. Cartoon or not, whether it's on a Disney cartoon channel mm-hmm. or not, but that's the thing it's too, like, like uh, you know, it's the the first season I remember kind of starting out, and I remember kind of enjoying it, but not being taking it too serious. Yeah, um, the childish just because, moments. Yeah, yeah. for right. sure. But like you said, there's that shift somewhere through the second yeah. season where it mm-hmm. starts getting really serious. You know, like Ahsoka, she comes back, she finds out that like 
she's the only one who realizes that Darth Vader, Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Like she, w that was her master. And a right? nice crossover from Clone Wars into right. Know, the other so shows. like to see to see her interact, like come back. She's older. Um, you know, there's a book that's coming out right away that it will explain yeah, all of her stuff. <laughs> like it's all I'm just sure you will read. Again, you can't you can't stress enough that like it's just a great time to be a Star Wars fan. Definitely one that I always look forward to each week. It's a great yeah. time to be a nerd in general, because then moving <laughs> to my favorite, one of the big premieres, and I think there's a new episode tomorrow. tomorrow I believe yeah. it's Tuesdays. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. This show has been a roller coaster ride of good episode, absolute garbage season, good episode. <laughs> uh, like I believe it was the first season, it relied too much on what they were doing in the Marvel movies, and now it's kind of finding its own niche with this later time slot like we were talking about off camera. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Rider, the way they brought him in, the where Quake is right now, kind of off the grid, and she doesn't want to be tied to anybody so that there's nothing to lose. Like, very dark, the way people are dying, blood splatter against the wall. Like, this That's is what one surprised of the best episodes me. of this show. That's what surprised me. Like, it was the first 20 minutes of the show. You know, there's some bad guys, Quake comes in, and then Ghost Rider comes in, and there's just blood spray. And I was like, whoa, and whoa! That, with whoa. The, like, ABC. that wall yeah. of fire, and you can see him, but you can't see it, yeah. just the skull fluttering, and Quake is trying to find out what's going on, like, Ah, but obvi and it obviously, so obviously, Marvel doesn't pull a Marvel in the sense where they try and keep something secret for freaking half the season. Mm -hmm. You do the see Ghost Rider, like you see, you know, Daisy, or you know, confront this guy. They get into a little tussle, and then poof, like you get to see him transform into Ghost Rider. Yeah. And I'm glad that happened in the first. The way episode, that they did you know? the melting away and yeah, everything. skin like, flakes away. Even though it was network television, there was even that Looks one scene. Looks better than the movies, right? When the car <laughs> yeah, flips through the air. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing I like the most is when the car was flipping through the air. Even though they were the Nick Cage Ghost Riders, and we dare not to speak on those. <laughs> There's moments where it's Agents of the Shield when everybody's doing their thing, but when Ghost Rider comes in, it gets hectic and it gets fast cut and it gets like the Ghost Rider movies were filmed. Right. And I find that the way that they balance that is really cool. The Ghost Rider, mm. the way it's filmed and the tone of him is a different show almost in itself. Now just don't spoil it and show Ghost Rider in action. Like really show him. I just want to see a pen and stare. <laughs> I want to see that. I want the, I want the chain whip. Yeah. You know, that's what I got to be seeing. Fire. And, you know, yeah. the jacket. It was uh, on fleek for the millennials yeah. that are listening. <laughs> oh, fleek. <laughs> is, that, is that what we have yeah, to show? Yeah, that's what we have to Yeah. Okay. So we had a little <laughs> discussion off camera where we were going to put together our top three Tim Burton movies uh, from number one to number three, what we lo loved the most. Myself and Curtis both made a list. And Josh well, I made going, a list. Oh, you did? I made a list. Kurt. I thought he I was bragging going that from he memory. Pick Josh thinks he knows me his. so well. He's like, oh, I can pick. I'm going to pick Kurt's two of three. You think you're going to get two of three? three? I think so. Okay, I think so. so. Do we want to start with that? All right. You, you want to go with my list first? Okay, you see if you can pick. No, you see if you can pick mine. Okay. Uh, well, honestly, totally and we're going right. honor system. He has honor the top three. Scouts honor. I so, but in no, I'm not going to play some. No, 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 no. Big fish, Sweeney Todd. And what's the other one? Ed. Uh, Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Those are those three. You got one, but oh. it was one I didn't think you would get. Sweeney Todd. No. No. Big no. Fish. Oh, oh big, we all. I'm. We all got big fish. I think everybody chose right. big fish. <laughs> Number three, uh, Edward Scissorhands. Okay, mm -hmm. classic. Just because that is. Believe it or not, my first introduction to Tim Burton, not Batman. Everybody thinks it'd be Batman. Yeah. But that one's just stuck in my brain. Like, I can watch that every time it's on TV, I'll watch it. Right. Guaranteed. Edward Scissorhands. I love that movie. Uh, number two was Sleepy Hollow. I thought oh. you'd get that one because I see every Halloween I watch Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, I almost did. made my list. Almost I made the list. I love Sleepy Hollow. I think for, like, <laughs> scary Tim Burton, yeah. that is one of my favorites by him. But then on a the more serious side, like, I didn't watch Big Fish for the longest time yeah. it comes out. I'm like, this looks stupid, this looks stupid. And I finally watched it and Big Fish, I can, oh. I go back and watch every six months. Yeah. Yep. I think it's for like a not like a, a more fantasy driven, like Al not Alice in Wonderland, but you know what I mean? Not like a dark, scary type of thing. Uh, Tim Burton, that movie is just fantastic. And it was nominated for a bunch of awards and it was. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of his best, I don't want to say attempts, but one of his best goes at storytelling. Just like yeah. the narration of the father on the deathbed, uh, Ewan McGregor, the way it 
jumps back and forth, both of them, and narrating the story. And like, it comes together like the ah. fantastic becomes reality to the same. Yeah, and you don't know for the whole movie. You're guessing, is he making crap yeah. up or is he telling the truth? Yeah. And it's that guessing game throughout yeah. that's a lot Big of fun. Big Fish and, yeah, like I said, Sleepy Hollow. I think that movie's still, like, the visuals in that movie. Yeah. Nobody could have done that movie. But nobody nobody could have done that movie. No. Christopher Walken as a freaky, horrifying yeah. monster yeah. person. Hey, I'm going to cut off your head. Right. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh, hey. hey. <laughs> you I did gotta a, flat, have a fat boy heads. slim video. I got a fever. <laughs> the prescription cured. is more heads. <laughs> that sounds dirty. No, and Sweeney Todd, it was close. I, I would, like, I, I'd you like, like the like, like musicals, musicals don't phase you like as much as a lot of as did. as much as it. Some people don't want to watch them, and I just remember Sweeney Todd coming out and you being like a big fan of it. So I was like, God, like Sweeney Todd has to be on that but list. The kid in me had to pick Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's the movie you gotta go with when you're yeah. talking about Burton. Josh. Uh, well, you're pretty good, sir. Well, you can't, so said he can remember him in there. there just but there's so <laughs> many. Like, I pretty much cheated. I, like, pretty I much was switching back between, like, Frank and me. I love Frank and me. There's yeah. so many. Oh, yeah. So, number three, I'm going to go with Beetlejuice. Oh, like okay. you said, so like Edward Scissorhands is kind of one of the first movies that you remember, uh, like growing up. Yeah. I, I remember Beetlejuice, and it's funny because, <laughs> like, growing up, Mom introduced me to all these movies, and then, uh, you know, as I got older, she'd be like, oh, like, don't you remember watching this when you were a kid? Like, you used to love this, you used to love this, and I'd be like, I don't know. Beetlejuice is one of my first memories that I can remember playing over at the school, Friday night. <laughs> Mom was over there with me, and she was like, we have to hurry back home. Beetlejuice is on tonight. This is the first time I remember, like, watching Beetlejuice. And, like, it was, it was such a close... Number three was so close between that and Batman because mm. Batman's the exact same thing. <laughs> I remember being at a party. So far, two nerds don't have Batman. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but like I just remember being like you know my parents d d doing the house parties and Batman was on one night and Mom was like Batman's on like just sit down and watch it. Oh, like I don't remember this. She was like you you love this movie, you know. She's telling me like I'm six years old. Oh, you love this movie. You watched it a thousand times. Sit your ass down you and know? watch this movie. So like it's those early memories for me like b between Beetlejuice and Batman. Like it's hard to choose Beetlejuice. Like it, it, it it's a tie. Yeah. But uh, Beetlejuice just edges it out. Just I mean everybody knows Batman, Michael Keaton, right? But and everybody knows Beetlejuice. But Beetlejuice, there's something about it. It's got the feels. Yeah. yeah. And so. <laughs> And, and possible sequels. Possible yeah. sequels coming out, right? Yeah, so, right? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And then number two was Big Fish for me. Big Fish yeah, again. Um, well, just let's do it number one. Two thousand three, like that's when so it came five out. Five movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two thousand three <laughs> is when it came out, and I just uh, for people that know me, kind of in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this little foreign screen. You're watching this out right now. But no, like this mythical I get, <laughs> in front of the screen. I get told that like I am quite the fibber when I tell my stories. I like to you exaggerate. Embellish. Yeah, I embellish God. certain points to make it better. To make it exciting. And, As and good storytelling does. And Big Fish is exactly that, right? Like like you said, the son, he's trying to meet his dad or he's trying to figure out his dad because his dad's always told him these these huge these tall tales growing up and he his dad's on his deathbed and he goes and he's like i want like how did you meet mom how did you do this tell me the real story yeah and he's still and his dad is telling him the stories the way he remembers it the way he wants to remember it and then at the end of the movie you find out that a lot of that stuff a lot of the characters in this movie they're they're real now they're not you know, to the point where they're mermaids or centaurs or whatever, <laughs> yeah. giants, but they are real. And he, he realizes that, you know what, like, it's his dad telling these stories and it, it it's kind of goes through him. Like, mm -hmm. that's the way he kind of does things, like, towards the end of the movie. So, like, a great movie. Like, if you haven't seen Big Fish, and I'm pretty sure, like, when we worked at Blockbuster, that was kind of one of our yeah. kind of hidden gems. If people came well, yeah, in, it was like, ask, be like, what do you recommend? Yeah. TBS Superstation was a thing. It used to be on that, like, after the oh, shank every week. <laughs> but, I mean, th that was a part of, you know, that was a few movies that when people came into Blockbuster, I was just like, if you haven't seen this, Big there you go. Anybody who is uh, born after the year 1996, <laughs> Blockbuster used to be a place to go, <laughs> and you give someone money, and they'd give you a, a VHS what? tape. But they would ask take for your home and watch it. Sometimes. And if you yeah. didn't bring it back in time, they would charge you more money, whereas now you just stream everything or download it on iTunes. <laughs> and number one, all-time favorite, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh! I knew somebody would have it. Oh, of course. Was that the first Claymation movie, stop motion, to make it on the list? Uh, James oh, yeah. and the Giant Peach. I, oh, no. 
Uh, Nightmare. Of his? Yeah, oh, yeah, Nightmare was, was 93, one. and then well, uh, James Frank and the Giant Peach. Short, like, yeah. back in college. Yeah. He has a bunch yeah. of, like, short animation ones. Yeah. But, I mean, shout out to, like, James and the Giant Peach, Frank and Weenie. Was James um, and the Giant Peach get a live action remake? Corpse Is Bride. Really? BGW I didn't know that. Next week on the Gentleman's I literally Gentleman just show. watched it with my daughter yesterday for the first time. Which one? Third. James and the Giant Peach. It's another oh, weird yeah. one. <laughs> it's another weird one. So, Very like, weird. <laughs> I mean, if anybody's seen, like, our review for Kubo, like, my love for, like, stop animation, mm. claymation, like, I love Rudolph. <laughs> like, get me some Rudolph every Christmas. But A Nightmare Before Christmas, that's. A movie that I watch at Halloween and at Christmas. Yeah. It's two. It's two for one, really. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody knows Nightmare Before Christmas, so no, really, it took, don't need to this? delve into that. What's this? Yeah, it yeah. took me a long time to appreciate. It. I remember watching it as a kid, teenager. I'm like, I still don't see the yeah. hype. And I watched it when I was older. I'm like, man, this there's movie so, is so many good. people you talk to, and they kind of give that same answer. They're like, I didn't like it when it first came out. Like. You know, you kind of age different. and you mature, and then, yeah. and I like, I was kind of like that the same way. I was like, man, this is really, it's filmed wonky. Like, it looks funny. They're singing, ugh, you yeah, know, back when like, you're a kid. But now, like, it's just something you can really appreciate. This is almost like look at it now, and think back. This is 25 years ago. Right. But that's a great now, thing about stop motion animation is that it. clay yeah. looks like clay no matter what. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, it. yeah, it's true. So. But you know, Tim Burton definitely has that that style and that look. Like yeah. you can point out a Tim Burton movie. Oh yeah. The long gangly is always right. like that. That Tim Burton. Because there's film. a lot of there's well not a lot but there's a, some different box trolls and stuff like that. Yeah. Like you put box trolls beside anything that Tim Burton's done and you can point out Tim Burton. Like you said, the long dangly. The in tons of movies. Would there be like somebody like? There, and Labyrinth and Guillermo del Toro if there wasn't a Tim Burton? I yeah, so. no, sure. I don't know. But yeah. stop motion have made it to the level that it did without Tim Burton. I don't think so. Like visually, in a, you know, it's always the weird stuff for like the cartoons or the animations, but you don't realize how visually like his like how his mind works for like the the real movies and big fish for I think example anybody knows you know Burton's mind works. like yeah. big fish there's certain movies where like they're just it's completely out there alice in wonderland like visually mm -hmm. like that's i love it yeah. alice in wonderland, and you can visually. see like the the nightmare before christmas isms in like cheshire cat and the way that yeah. he does certain yeah. things where those are all the callbacks where that's that pinnacle you see it you're like yeah it's tim burton yeah well, I guess we'll hey, mosey into my list. <laughs> Let's pull it out. I got here in the old pocket ready to go. So, actually, the we only have one movie that crosses over on the list. My number three movie, Mars Attacks. No way! Really? really? Wow. I like, that's a good movie. I loved that movie because it's so ridiculous. Yep. Like, Pierce Brosnan's head on a dog and the dog head. Like, it's just the way that that movie went from start to finish when Marty McFly gets eviscerated by the ray gun. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the, the bird start, starts the war between humans and the aliens, <laughs> the way that they were textured to look, their voices. Again, it was like one of those things where, of course, Tim Burton would have made this movie. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Definitely underappreciated, I think. For sure, yeah. yeah. Most people are like, this is just ridiculous. Like, it's supposed to be, but it's yeah. like brilliant at yeah. the same time. Yeah, 100%. It's one of those movies where it's just like, it's stupid, but it was made to be a stupid movie. Yeah, and oh, he yeah. did it brilliantly. Yeah. yeah, totally. And he took it seriously for how stupid it was, which I thought yeah. was hilarious. And you can tell that, like, you know, everybody was on board because the cast that everybody, he had was ginormous. It was yeah. just A-listers. Everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Such a stupid movie. So, like, if you don't think that, like, Pierce Brosnan at the time, like, Bond, that's, that's right? Like that's gold night. Yeah. Like, totally. That was know? when he was at his pinnacle. Was yeah. That movie yeah. So oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Remington Steel. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Mamma Mia. <laughs> this is Doubtfire. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like a pinch to the back of it. <laughs> Ah, oh, rest <laughs> in peace, Robin Williams. I miss your comedy. Yeah. So that was my number three. My number two movie, I loved it, but it also disgusted me. It made me feel like <laughs> it was just one of those movies that like made me move in my chair. Batman Returns because of the penguin. And when he's eating fish and the black goo that's coming oh, out yeah, of his mouth. Yeah. Like they All made the him disgusting. Yeah. That whole movie was disgusting. It was very dirty. The world felt more lived in. I, and yeah. It's one of those childhood things. It sticks. I still remember going to the theater. I remember what I ordered for a concession. <laughs> I remember everything about that whole experience because I loved it. Yeah. I saw Batman. Christopher Walken again, by the yeah, way. Chris, yeah, Christopher Walken. <laughs> I just, it just sticks out in your head. Like I can just picture it. 
almost it's one of those movies that, like his movies that stick with your memories but I remember watching in theater I remember sitting with my cousin watching it one mm-hmm. time you know he just I remember playing the video game yeah, because yeah. Of the look of it you know oh, it's all those yeah. tied together yeah I remember the giant duck ship that the penguin yeah. would yeah. ride like mm-hmm. it was just I felt like they, they did a very extreme version of him but to me they did th- th- that's my vision of the penguin is this disgusting little mutated creature guy and just the way well, that they, Dana DeVito handled handled him in the movie and everything. How many times it. was Penguin portrayed before that? Like what? just yeah, just Adam West still, Batman, in right? The Adam West so, or like, any of the Burgess. animateds or anything. Yeah. I just felt like if Penguin of... existed in the real world, that's what he would be. Yeah, he, yeah. He's that's usually the gangster with the top hat and he's got his cane umbrella and everything. But I just figured if he was going to be this little obsessed with penguins, why wouldn't he be deformed into the right. you know live long and prosper yeah, and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and why wouldn't he be raising like deformed freak shows? Thrown circus, into the sewer when he which was then a baby. becomes the bad guys. You know, it's a uh, yeah, it was uh, his and own take on it on a origin story for him, but it worked. And a really good depiction of Catwoman too. I thought. In that oh, movie. that's when I fell in love with Michelle Pfeiffer. Right, I just her everybody. falling out of the her dying after falling out her window and the cats yeah. coming like eating her, eating her. her back to life. <laughs> yeah. it was just it was just you know Halle Berry <laughs> step aside. That was one of the best. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think I probably liked uh, that version of it more than the Anne Hathaway one. I agree. Yeah. Like her, her, her she was more comic works. booky, but it was still realistic-ish. Mm. In, in like that she way, she's the right kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think mean, that's what it was crazy. Whereas Anne, Anne Hathaway, Hathaway was, was a bitch. Just, <laughs> Anne Hathaway was just kind of mad. Yeah. yeah. Mad wanted to steal you know? from the rich. Hmm. Whereas she was, she was just crazy. You know, a what crazy. if like crazy? Hot. I wish kind of back then, <laughs> you know, Tim Burton had done a trilogy for Batman. We wouldn't have got so rid that, of Michael Keaton just goes and then go studio interfer- interference even twenty plus years ago. Back then, you but know. What the Tim. Schumacher version was yeah. pretty close to yeah. no. <laughs> good for Tim Burton though, like, <laughs> stick into his guns and be like, I'm not making that movie. No, for no, sure. He has not once sold out, I don't think. No. Yep. Even if it was a bomb or it was a miss, it was Tim Burton. Yeah. The movies that they want Tim Burton to sell out on, like the sequel to Alice in Wonderland. They it's just like get people and they pay them to make a movie as if Tim Burton were to make it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, no, you can just tell it's a knockoff. It's like Folkleys. Yeah. <laughs> Jokeleys. <laughs> Jokeleys. Yeah, I like that. And of course, number one, we've all said it, Big Fish. Big Boom. Fish. Look at that. Look at that. Three. We did not discuss this like, at all before. No, we just all had random. the idea. So obviously, Big Fish is a good movie. Yeah. So those are, if you're a fan of Tim Burton, those are definitely the movies you want to take a look at. Are there any honorable mentions you figure we you should You could, give? you just IMDb Tim Burton under director yeah, even. Look out. And you'll maybe find four, maybe five that you're like, eh, it wasn't his best work. Mm-hmm. But you the just rest. like look at like the it's hard. He said, and you're not even mentioning like I can't even think off the top of my head now. There's so many right like, that he's done. That like you said, like, Edward Scissorhands, yeah, like Edward Scissorhands, the, the two Batman's, Alice in Wonderland, and then into his animation stuff. There's so many, and like making a list of three movies. Like I'm pretty sure all three of us just kind of checked made, it out well, to I, see. I, I could have made. So I wanted to put it was Corpse Bride on there. Yeah, like, there yeah, were yeah, so many Corpse good Bride, movies. Like, like, maybe the ones I don't like, something like uh, Dark Shadows or his. Re- Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Oh, Kurt <laughs> like that one. You liked it. I love the. Book. I like it if I'm in the right <laughs> frame of mind. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> enjoy yeah. that movie. But yeah, like directing wise and writing, he's almost spot on. And also, he was because uh, he was supposed to make uh, the Death of Superman movie, which has that documentary, "The Death of Superman Lives." What happened? Right. And he's in that movie, just talking yeah. in his Tim Burton way, to sitting all chill, talking about his you, crazy hair. Could you imagine <laughs> what a Tim Burton Superman Batman movie would have been? <laughs> like the, the with the suit that had like electrical flares going through it, and Nicolas Cage was Superman. Like, like oh hair, yeah, right? oh, like oh, they yeah. went way for it, and it could have been because that would have been, I think, early '90s, because it would have been yep. after all the Batman movies. Yeah. Could have been something. Could have been something. I don't know. You never know. Yeah, that's true. They were going to have Brainiac in that. They were going to yeah. have so many different yeah. versions. But Tim Burton, The Gentleman Show, yeah. homage. God incarnate Burton. himself. So hopefully, Miss Peregrine, we can add to the list. Of well, I have a feeling that this is going to be... That's why Like, Miss Peregrine's yeah. will be good. Like, yeah, we're going to be reviewing it, mm-hmm. so... Like I said when we did our full movie preview, I said nobody... After reading the book... Tim Burton was perfect mm-hmm. for it yeah. to direct this movie. Yeah, I've been seeing some like pre-reviews, the ones that have come out and everything before that. People are enjoying it so far, and it has that Tim Burton feel that like yeah. you're gonna watch it even if you didn't know he made it. You'd be like, I wonder if Tim Burton had it. Well, and that's kind of like that's you know a, qu- a quarter, if not half, the reason why you go see Tim Burton films. Yep. It's, it's, it's Tim it's Burton. I, he see, has. If I see Tim Burton, I'm usually like. He has such a giant thing. stamp that like covers like it's his own you know thing that. 
you know, it's it's his like that's his identity though, like the way mm-hmm. he films, right? So I always pictured his claymation movies are just what his thoughts look like. To just say, yeah. oh, that's <laughs> the way he thinks <laughs> real right? life is. Yeah, it's just a- <laughs> you can you may, he might not be like the hugest box office success or whatever, but you can maybe name a few directors on one hand who can make a comedy, can make an animation, can make a drama, mm-hmm. can make a horror. And each one you can be like, that's Tim, Tim Burton. Burton. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. What do you think of Tim Burton movies? What are your favorites? Maybe some didn't make your list that made our list and vice versa. You can join the conversation in the comments underneath. And of course, follow these lovely gentlemen on the Twitters. At Real Reviews 0 And at On Air Darren for myself. And find us on Facebook, The Gentleman Show. Until next week, we need to think of more ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha